Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is Thursday. It's time for a Magic Stuff. And today I'm going to do another in the three best trick series. And today I'm going to be talking to you about three more packet tricks. The very first video I did on the best three series, there's three best packet tricks that you've never seen before. And that's what kickstarted the whole series off. Well, I'm a massive fan of packet tricks. So today I'm going to be presenting you with three more packet tricks that you've probably never seen before. Now, I ummed and ahed about whether to, use the, uh, whether to include the first one or not, because even though it's a very, very old packet trick that's been around for a very long time, it's recently been re-released. But I think that's even more of a reason to actually highlight it to you guys, because it's now available again everywhere. It means that, um, uh, it means that you can find it very, very easily, and it's such a great packet trick. So I'm going to be talking to you about the three best packet tricks you've probably never seen before. I'm going to break down why they're so good, and I'm going to tell you where you can get them from. Without further ado, let's have a look at the first packet trick. Okay, so packet trick number one is The Capitulating Queens by James Swain. Now, this is a routine that I have done for years and years and years, and it has recently been uh, re-released, or uh, it's just shown up on dealer's shelves again. I was on Alakazam the other day, and I saw it was there, right there on page one. And this is a good thing, because this packet trick is so great. It is such a commercial packet trick. It's something that I've done for years and there's a lot of plus points to it. Let's have a look at the packet trick first of all. I'm going to perform it to you and then we'll break down why it's so good. Right, I've got Sarah behind the camera. How are you doing, Sarah? Good, thanks. Good stuff. This is the Capitulating Queens. Sarah, you're going to make all the decisions. I've got four cards, four queens. Oh, nice. Uh, first of all, you're going to pick a colour. Do you want the reds or the blacks? Your choice. Reds, obviously. Obviously. And do you want the hearts or a diamond? Oh. You want the hearts, yeah? Yeah. This one right here. It's interesting that you should say the Queen of Hearts. You know why? Why? What's really interesting here is I never showed you the backs of the cards, but I've got three blue backed cards, <laughs> one green backed card. Mine green. And it would be the Queen of Hearts. Okay. You pick the only one with a different coloured back, which is pretty cool. But I know what you're thinking. You think, well, what, what would have happened if you'd picked uh, the diamond instead and you'd gone for the red diamond instead of the red heart? Well, I would have snapped my fingers. And what would have happened is there still would have been one odd backed card. But this one would have been a purple one. Uh, and it would have been the Queen of Diamonds instead. Mm. You probably should have gone for that one as purple is your favourite colour. Favorite yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. But what would have happened if, You'd have picked the, the clubs. You might have gone for a black card. What happened if you picked clubs? Well, yeah. if you picked clubs, I would have snapped my fingers. And what would have happened? There would have been one odd backed card. It would have been a red backed card. And this would be the queen of clubs. Okay. So what would have happened if you picked the last one, which I think was the spades. queen of spades, was it? Yeah. yeah. If you picked the queen of spades, it's a little bit more difficult because that one has got a blue back. Right. So the only way to show this is the odd backed card is if I snap my fingers like this and I change it so that there's three red backed cards <laughs> and one blue backed card. No way. And that one is the is the Queen of Spades. So the question is, right. are they red? Are they blue? What are they? Well, the thing is, the whole thing's an illusion. And you can actually see that what we have is we have uh, a blue backed Queen of Spades. We have a red backed Queen of Diamonds, sorry, a purple back Queen of Diamonds. We have a green back Queen of Hearts. And finally, we have a red backed <laughs> Queen of Clubs. And that is how the trick's done. So that is a performance of the Capitulating Queens. First of all, it is super visual. If you actually think about how much magic is taking place in that routine, it's crazy. You know, first of all, uh, the, the, uh, the queens are uh, changing back design one at a time, and then all the backs of the other cards change except for the card, and then, uh, you know, every, everything, or each card has got a different back design. It's just crazy how much magic is actually happening. Now, the nice thing is at the very, very end of the routine, everything is examinable. You're left with one gaffed card, because this routine uh, has four regular cards and one gaffed card. The one gaffed card you can either get rid of by palming the card off if you want to, or uh, in the download that actually comes with it, you can actually, um, uh, you can take the queen, they suggest taking the queens out of a regular deck of cards and then just dropping that gaff off uh, onto the top of the deck as you display the other four queens. That's a great way of doing it as well. To be honest, I use this as a packet trick. So I tend to just palm it off and I hand the queens out uh, to be, not to be examined. You don't want to kind of draw attention to the cards at the end, but I'm gonna, I, I kind of just say, isn't that crazy? Look, have a look at them, check it out. Look at that one. Isn't that weird? Any idea how this works? And, and I just hand out the cards like that and I just either cop or palm off the, uh, off the gaffed card at the end. So it's examinable at the end. 
It is an instant reset. It can be done from the deck or it can be done from uh, a packet trip wallet. You don't require a table. That's the other nice thing about this routine. I think that the best place to do packet tricks is in a walk around condition where you've got a group of people looking down at your hands. I think that is where a packet trick shines. And I actually, um, if I'm booked to do walk around magic and then I'm booked to do tables, a lot of the time I'll actually draw attention to this and I'll say, hey guys, uh, I've got to get around all these people. Um, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Rather than doing a trick with a full pack of cards, I'll I'll do a trick with just a few cards. I've got a few cards here. You know, you've ever heard the expression, he's not playing with a full deck. Well, that's what they say about me. When I do this trick, I'm not playing with a full deck. I'm only playing with four cards. And I actually highlight the fact that I'm bringing a packet trick out. And I think it's great for a walk around situation. There are no angles to this trick. So you can do it from, it is literally angle proof. It's very, very easy to do. I think you've got a double lift and an Elmsley count in there and that's it. The Elmsley count is used over and over again. Now at the beginning of the routine, you notice that I do a frustration count. I don't draw attention to the backs all being blue, but uh, that wasn't in the original handling. Uh, in the original handling, they asked to name a card and that's the only one with a different colored back. And then the cards change one by one. I do a frustration count at the beginning and I just say, hey, I've got four queens here. Uh, let me show you something with them. They can see that the cards are blue. I don't need to point them out. So when I get my first change, it's a magical moment. The card has changed as opposed to being the only one uh, with a different back. Either way is absolutely fine. Uh, but yeah, there's no downside to this trick. It is super commercial. I have done it for a very, very long time. Think about it, instant reset, no table required, no angles, easy to do, examinable at the end, uh, and, and lots of magic. It makes a great opening routine. Uh, because because there is so much magic in it happening, it establishes credibility. And at the end, when you hand these queens out, it gives you a reason to put them away and say, well, let, now let's try something else. I always like to go from a packet trick into a full pack of cards if I'm doing a longer set. Not if I'm doing walk around magic, I'll probably go from a packet trick into something else like a coin trick. But if I'm doing a longer set, I like the idea of having a packet trick and then saying, well, you know, that was only a few cards. Let's try and do something with a full pack of cards. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is the Capitulating Queens. I highly recommend it. It is available, uh, Mere Yidid Magic uh, publishes it or, or, or distributes it. Uh, and it's available through all magic dealers. It's available through Murphy's. So you can get it from Penguin or Alakazam or anybody. Highly recommend it. It's not very expensive. The cards are well made. It'll last you a very, very long time. And that is the Capitulating Queen. Highly recommend it. So the second routine that I'm going to share with you guys is a Gary Jones effect. Now, those of you that know uh, this channel will know that I'm a big Gary Jones fan. His magic is super commercial and it's designed to be worked in a real world. Now, this routine that I'm going to be showing you is called Ambitious Jazz. And what Gary has done brilliantly is he's taken... Um, uh, Peter Kane's Jazz Aces, if you don't know Peter Kane's Jazz Aces, it's a classic ace assembly. He's taken Peter Kane's Jazz Aces, he's combined it with like an, a small packet ambitious card, and the result is this wonderful routine that is an absolute joy to perform. Um, and everything is examinable at the beginning, at the end, there's no gaffed cards in this. Uh, it has to be done as, an, as, a, as a packet trick because uh, you've got like duplicates openly. You've got like four king of hearts. In my case, I do a packet trick where I've got, I use four king of hearts and four two of spades, as you'll see. So it has to be presented as a packet trick, but it is so commercial. Let me perform this for you. And then once I've performed it, we'll break down why it's so good. So Sarah, um, I'm going to show you a Gary Jones trick right now. I know you're a big fan of Gary Jones. Uh, you're holding the camera, so you can't really touch these, but they are all examinable. We have four King of Hearts and we have four Two of Spades. We have eight cards all together. Okay? Yeah. Um, and what you're about to see right now, it's not a trick. It's an illusion. Um, it's, it's kind of crazy what I'm going to do here. Let me show you. But to be clear, so you understand the situation, I'm going to take the, uh, the two. So I'm going to take the four Two of Spades. And I'm going to pop them on the uh, on the table right there for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want you to remember that over here we have the um, kings. the kings exactly. So the kings go here, mm. and the uh, the twos go here. Now this is an illusion, because if I show you this king and I put it here in between the twos, right here in the middle, if I do this, you see it going into the middle, right? Yeah. But it's an illusion. You see, if I snap my fingers, it's actually on top. 
Right. It's kind of weird. Now, maybe you didn't know what was going to happen. There is a rule of magic that you should never repeat the trick, but I'm going to do it again. So watch the twos. This time you know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to take another king, this one here. I'm going to pop it right in the middle. Now, I want you to see it really is going right there into the middle. Yeah. It looks like it is, but it's an illusion. You see, when I snap my fingers, you can see it's actually what? come right. I know, right? It's so crazy. So crazy. So look, we've still got two cards to go. I'll do it again. Watch very carefully. Watch the twos. Watch everything. I'm going to take the next king, this one here. I'm going to pop it right there in the middle. Now, so you can see the situation, I want you to see right there. There's the king mm. going there into the middle. I'm going to push it in as slowly as I can. I cannot get fairer than this. You can see right there going into the middle, right? Yeah. Until I snap and it comes to the top. It's just weird, really, when you think about it. But the last one, I won't even touch that final king. Watch, I'm just going to take the four twos and I'm just going to drop them right there onto that final king. Okay. And do that. And when I do that, final king comes to the top. Leaving us over here with the one, two, three, four twos. <laughs> so that was Ambitious Jazz by Gary Jones. What an awesome routine it is. Now, first of all, again, let's look at the pros. It is completely examinable at the end of the routine and at the beginning. So you can hand the cards out at the beginning and you can have them looked at if that's your thing. You can have them at the end examined, which is really cool. Um, you know, a lot of the time you don't need to do that, but you've all been there where you've been at a gig and there's somebody that's very hands-on and there's somebody that's like, hey, let me look at that. Let me look at that. Well, this allows you to do that. So the cards are examinable before and afterwards. It's not really that difficult a routine. I think you've got an Atlas in there, you've got a, an Elmsley Count in there, there's a, there's a couple of simple moves, but it's not actually that difficult to do. Um, you know, I, pretty much every single worker that I know does some form of ambitious card. Now the question is, why do you do an ambitious card? You do an ambitious card because it's guaranteed to get a great reaction. Spectators know that a deck of cards has 52 cards. They know if they put a card into the middle, it's impossible for the card to come to the top. So when it does that, it's, um, you know, when it, when it actually keeps coming to the top of the deck, it, it, it really is something that magician, uh, that layman can understand is completely impossible. Well, when you've got this routine, it's exactly the same thing, but they can really burn everything. You are so fair. Each display is so fair. They see the card coming to the top every single time. It is just a really engaging plot. Now, if you want to, this makes a great transition piece. And what I mean by that is you can perform this routine, then you can transition quite logically into an ambitious card because you can say, well, you know, the problem is um, I was only using eight cards. I wasn't using a whole deck and, and the card wasn't signed. So let's see if we can do that same thing, but with one card. Maybe there were too many cards for you to follow. Let's do it with one card. But conversely, you can go from an ambitious card into this. So you could say you could do an ambitious card where the card's coming to the top of the pack. And then you can say, well, you know what the problem is? You're using a full deck of cards here. So let's see if we can bring it down to its smallest amount of cards. You can do this, this. We'll do it with, with, with eight cards. So you can transition between routines very, very easily. Uh, uh, Gary Jones and Chris Congreve also brought out a routine through Penguin Magic called Upper Hand. And if you haven't seen Upper Hand, Upper Hand uses exactly the same set of cards. So you've got four twos, you've got uh, you've got you've got two sets of four dupes. So in, again, in my situation, I've got two uh, four twos and I've got four kings. And it's a um, it's like a Gary Kurtz translocation type routine so you put the four twos into four different pockets you have the four kings here and boom they change places very very cleanly now upper hand when you buy it it comes with eight cards and one of the cards is special um, I won't tell you why it's special. One of the cards is special. However, you don't need to use that special card. Once you learn how the routine works, you can just use two sets of four dupes. So what you can do is you can do uh, you can you can do this routine, and then you can follow it up with upper hand very very easily. And think about that for a set. You bring out some cards, you have it examined, you do that lovely ambitious jazz sequence, and then you say, well, let's see if we can go one step further. Let's take the kings and put them away. I'll put this one in this pocket, this one in this pocket, this one in this pocket, this one in this pocket. Now watch, boom. And now they change places very, very cleanly. And you've got like a seven, eight, nine minute act there that will just blow people away every single time. Um, no table required, that's another advantage of it. You can very, very, you can put in cards down on the table in a couple of places, but you don't need to. It's very easy to routine it without. Um, 
Uh, there's no, there's not, it's an instant reset. Uh, there's no downside to this, really. There really is no downside. I've even done this in the past with a blank deck of cards. I've done a routine where I've ended up with a blank deck of cards, and I've had four people sign. I've had two people sign. I say, you take these four cards and sign them with this red Sharpie marker. You take these four cards, sign them with this blue Sharpie marker. Now, let's see if we can do something with these eight cards. And I've done the same routine, but with signed cards. Now you're burning through blank cards there. So it's a bit of an expensive routine to do. But if you're doing like a bigger set, and you, you maybe you've turned the entire deck blank, it's a really logical thing to do next. So it's a great routine that can be structured as either an opener or a middler. You can even close with this, and it allows you to move into so many other directions. It's a real worker. Like we'd imagine with all of Gary's magic, it is a very, very strong piece of magic. To, uh, to learn and perform. Audiences love it. The final routine that I want to talk to you about is uh, a routine that I actually published myself, and I've now published it on three separate projects. First of all, it was in an ebook. Then I put it out with a blank pack of cards or four blank cards, and I called it Mirage, and I put it out on my DVD blank, which came with the blank cards that you needed to perform it. And then I I, you know what, I then put it out, I put it out so many times, I then put it out on Locked in Room Without Coins, and I called it the I Hate Lance Burton trick, or the Lance Burton appreciation trick, um, and there was a different alternate ending, which I'll talk about later on, and then I put it out again, a, again a different variation with a regular deck of cards, on my DVD Slim. So it's been published four separate times by me now, and each time has been slightly different. But this is one of my thousand timers. If you ever meet Greg Wilson, he'll say to you, what's your thousand timer? What's the routine that you do a million times? Imagine you handed a deck of cards by a really important guy, and you've got to do one trick to really impress them. What would you do? This is the routine that I would do. I'm going to perform it for you. It is a packet trick, but, and you can do it as a packet trick. So when I put it on blank, I did it as just a packet trick. I, I took four blank cards cards out and um, I, I had someone pick a card from a regular deck of cards and I did it with just four blank cards but what I tend to do these days is I tend to do uh, I tend to perform it like I did on slim and locked in a room without coins which is I use a regular pack of cards so I take four aces out and I do the routine with four aces um, so it's a packet trick but I'm just taking the four cards from from a regular deck of cards and then I'm putting the cards away. So let's have a look at the routine first of all and then we'll talk about uh, why I think, I'm a bit biased obviously because it's my routine, but we'll talk about why it's so awesome. So um, this uses a regular shuffled deck in use and I've got Sarah behind the camera again. Hey Sarah, how you doing? Hello. Hey, so um, I'm going to uh, show you something right now. Now every time I do this routine, I always uh, start off by doing a little bit of an ace production. So I'll, I'll do the uh, the production that I use and then we'll go into the actual trick. So Sarah, I'm going to uh, cut cards onto the table as I do any time you want to just say stop. Stop. Right there? Mm -hmm. Cool. Brilliant stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, what the card is. Whatever it is, I'm going to try and find the other three of that value. So we've got the ace of spades. So I'm going to try and find the other three aces. Uh, I'll try and do it in less than a second. Less than a second would look something like that. That's one, two, three, four. Uh, that's the that's the production. Sure. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but you can find that on Parlor. That was on my Parlor DVD. But that's not the routine I wanted to show you. This is the routine. So we've got four aces. And Sarah, you're going to pick a card. Now, uh, I'm going to write your name in it. So maybe pick one with white space. Uh, I'll spread through. And when you see one you like, look up, just let me know. Okay. Uh, three of hearts. That one right there? Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. So I'm going to put your name on there. So we'll write Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, little thingy. And I'm going to put a smiley face because you are always happy. You're always smiley because you are married to me. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that, shall we? So you would agree that this card is unique to you. It's yeah. the only one that has your name in exactly that spot. Yes. Cool. I'm going to put the three into my pocket and okay. just uh, pop it down there and we'll get back to it in a minute. In all honesty, what you're about to see right now is an illusion. It's not real. It's an illusion. So, so we've got clarity of what's happening. I'll just put the rest of the cards away. So we're only working with the four aces. So I'm going to create an illusion using the four aces. We're going to use the ace of hearts, that one right there. The Ace of Spades, the Ace of Clubs, and the Ace of Diamonds. Mm -hmm. And the illusion goes like this. I want you to watch the four aces, but the card I want you to specifically watch is this one here, the Ace of Spades. 
Right. If I leave it in the middle and give a little twist, what happens is that Ace of Spades actually turns into your card with your name on it. Your little smiley <laughs> face. Right. Now, it's crazy, but it's only an illusion. That is not really a three. I know it looks like your card, but it's not. I'll do it again. We've still got three aces left. We'll take the one in the middle, which is the ace of clubs, the black one. It gets sandwiched in between the two red ones. This time I just snap. And if I wait a second, that one, the ace of clubs, turns into your card with your name on it. So what's happening is one at a time, these aces are changing. Yep. That leaves us with two. And I'll let you know the moment it happens with this ace of diamonds. So I want you to watch the ace of diamonds. Don't watch the ace of hearts. Uh, watch the ace of diamonds. It looks like this. If I just wave it over the other two, that one changes oh almost in midair. Isn't that great? Leaves us with just that one, the ace of hearts. Now think about this for a minute. We've now got three cards with your name on it and one card left to go, which is the Ace of Hearts. Now, the Ace of Hearts is the hardest one because uh, there's nothing to cover the Ace of Hearts up with. So I have to just do it like this. And that right. final one changes. And now we have four cards, four threes with your name on it. But I, you know that's impossible. You can't have, you didn't sign the card four times. Yeah. But do you remember at the very beginning, if I can get into my pocket here, we put one card in my pocket yeah. and that was your card. <laughs> because this is an illusion. You see, right. your card's been in my pocket the whole time. And if I break the illusion, you'll see that these cards always have been and they always will be the four aces. <laughs> nice. So there you go. That is a handling of Mirage, the Lance Burton appreciation trick, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, let me talk to you why I like this routine. First of all, I'm a big fan of Wildcard. I do a few different versions of Wildcard. I think I've shown you on the channel. I do a version of Assis Wins Wildcard. I just have Tommy Wonders. I do so many different versions. I like wild card i think it's great uh, but the trouble is you're always doing it with gaff cards which isn't too much of a problem but this allows me to do this handling anytime anywhere i literally want to go into this i take four aces out of the deck and i say let's do something with just four aces oh and you can pick a card for me as well um the nice thing is this can transition from an ace production so if you've just done an ace production and that's what i typically will do i'll produce the four aces uh, then I might do something else with them, like a sandwich routine or a kickback routine or something like that. And then I'll say, well, you know what? There's too many cards here in this deck of cards. Let's just use the four aces and one other card. Can you pick a card for me? And I'll go into this routine. So uh, it's nice because you can transition to it, into it any way that you want to. Um, it's very visual because it's using a signed card. It's very visual. As each change happens, it becomes more and more impressive. And the moment in the third phase where I'm doing like a mini frustration count because it's done very off beat people are just convinced they're seeing three signed cards there that is one of the strongest moments of the routine because they are convinced at that point they're seeing three signed cards um it's it's a nice finale because everything goes back to the way they were because you show that the card was in the top pocket from the very very beginning now when i published this on locked in a room without coins and i called it the lance person appreciation trick i did this in a different way and i still do it that way some this way sometimes I, I did it as a card under watch. Now, I've talked about card under watch on 5x5, five five, episode one of 5x5. Five five. You can go check that out. I, uh, I showcased just a normal card under watch. Well, what I did on Locked in Room Without Coins is instead of having a card picked and openly putting it in the top pocket, I had a card picked, signed, lost in the pack, right? I then had the four aces taken back and I did the routine with the four aces, and uh, I then, so they think, and I was doing it into their hands. So they think they've got four signed cards. And then what happened is as I was putting them into their hand like this, this hand drops to the side. I did one-handed card, one-handed card fold, one-handed palm and card fold. And then as I bring their hand closer, I loaded this folded up card under their watch. I then turn over and show that the four cards have turned back into aces. And I say, well, so the question is, where's your card? And I try to make it come back. It fails. And then they wave their hand over. And when they do, they see they've got the sign card under their watch. It's a nice way to end it. It really is. But you need to make sure that you've got somebody with a watch. Uh, and you need to make sure it's the right type of watch. Whilst the, uh, the handling I just showed you can be done anytime, anywhere. You don't need people wearing particular types of watches. But yeah, it's examinable. 
It's a regular pack of cards. It's an instant reset, obviously, because it's just four cards from a deck of cards. There's no gaffs, there's no gimmicks. It's very easy to do. It's just an Ascanio spread and a few doubles. And uh, it gets a great reaction. It really does. When their signed card is, is, when each ace is turning into their signed card, they just can't believe it. It's just impossible. Uh, it, it's highly recommended. I really, as I say, it's my thousand timer. Uh, if you ever see me at a gig, there's a very good chance I will do this trick. Um, yeah, check it out. Slim. Locked in a room without coins, born a freak, or blank. You can check it out on any of those uh, projects. So there you go. That is another magic stuff. Three more packet tricks that you've probably never seen before. Now, guys, it's over to you. Let me know if you have seen these uh, these packet tricks before. If you have, let me know down below what you think of them. Uh, is it something that uh, you've performed before? If so, what are the reactions like? Is there something you've seen that you might actually uh, try and do yourself? If so, let me know. And would you like to see another uh, three best packet tricks you've never seen before. I'm lucky enough to know thousands of packet tricks. I absolutely love them. Some people would say bordering on obsession. So let me know if you want to do another one of these. I did this one because so many people asked me to do a follow-up to the original three packet tricks you've never seen before, which is why this one's here now. But if you want to see another one, let me know. Let's get a dialogue going in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell all your friends about us, and I will be back tomorrow uh, on a Friday with a magic rant at night o'clock and a magic live at six o'clock thanks very much for watching my name's craig from magic tv